<laughs> so what is the antidote to this virus, this Babylon virus, this material infection, this infection of materialism that we have? What is what is the antidote? Luke chapter 19, verses 1 to 10. He entered Jericho and was passing through. There was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but he was not able because of the crowd, since he was a short man. So, running ahead, he climbed up a sycamore tree to see Jesus, since he was about to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, because today I must stay at your house. So he quickly came down and welcomed him joyfully. All who saw it began to complain, he's gone to lodge with a sinful man. Verse 8, But Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, I'll give half of my possessions to the poor Lord, and if I've extorted anything from anyone, I'll pay back four times as much. Today salvation has come to this house, Jesus told him, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save the lost. Remember we were talking in August about how the action is the evidence? Yes. Yeah. His action. First, his desire to, to see Jesus running ahead of the crowd. Second, climbing up in a tree. So mm -hmm. that he could see him, even just to get a glimpse of him. The action yeah. was the evidence of something that was changed in this man's life. Notice that he did not have to ask, as the people did, ask John the Baptist, what should we do? Uh, yeah. Yeah. He said, Lord, I'll give. I'll give half. And if I've extorted anything for anyone, I'll pay back 400%. The change was already evident in his life. It was already, the action that this man took was the evidence of the change that was already being wrought and had been wrought in his life. Ephesians 2, 1 to 10, And you were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you previously walked, according to the ways of this world, according to the ruler who exercises authority over the lower heavens, the spirit now working in the disobedient. So there is a spirit at work in the disobedient. Hmm. Paul goes on to say, verse 3, We too all previously lived among them in our fleshly desires, carrying out the inclinations of our flesh and thoughts, and we were by nature children of wrath, as the others were also. So we Christians were like the unsaved. Because we lived among them in our fleshly desires. We had the virus. Uh huh. We did not have the antidote. Okay? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 4 But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love that he had for us, made us alive with the Messiah, even though we were dead in trespasses. You are saved by grace. Zacchaeus was made alive in Christ because of the love that God had for us. Yes. Verse 6, together with Christ Jesus, he also raised us up and seated us in the heavens. That is a positional place, right? Mm -hmm. So that in the yeah. coming ages he might display the immeasurable riches of his grace through his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. So it's not about you it's not about me, okay? He raised us up. He seated us in the heavens. He made us alive with Christ, even though we were dead. Why did he do this? So that in the coming ages, he might display the immeasurable riches of his grace through his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. It is all for his glory. It's not about you at all. Or your Christian. For you are saved by grace through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is God's gift. Not from works, so that no one can boast. Notice, this is, this is exactly what Jesus was talking about. The things that people look to 
as symbols of wealth and success and, and having achieved, God is revolted Why? by. Why? Because the ultimate gift is salvation. And we are right. saved by grace right. through faith. And it's not from ourselves. It's God's gift to us. Okay. And it's not from works. Nothing that you can do can earn your salvation. Mm -hmm. Here's another reason why. For we are his creation, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time so that we should walk in them. Mm -hmm. Your mm -hmm. life has a purpose because of Christ. Yeah. Your life yeah. has a purpose because of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All these people that are running around preaching about purpose, 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 and telling people that they need to find their purpose, find their purpose, and God wants you to find your purpose, as though your purpose is somehow tied to the stuff that you're able to acquire. You need to go back and read this chapter. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love that he had for us, made us alive with the Messiah, even though we were dead in trespasses and sins. You are saved by grace. Grace. I mean, grace only. And this is why those of us that are quote unquote reformed believe that salvation is monergistic. It is not synergistic. Okay? It is not a synergism of what you do and what God does. You understand? It is yeah. not it is not a synergistic activity where God makes it possible for you to be saved. And you have to then decide whether to accept or not. Because there is no way that something that is dead can come to life. <laughs> If you have to contribute to your salvation, then you have to work. And if salvation is God's gift by grace through faith, not from yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, so that no one can boast. What is the reason for that? Because if you had a part in your salvation, you could stand up and say to God, look what I did. Oh. But now that you're saved, you've got work to do. Yes. The work is a result of. You understand? Yeah. The work is a result of. It is yeah. not the cause of. Uh, uh -huh. Right. Right. Okay. We seek to do good works because we are his creation created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time so that we should walk in them. Okay. So in other words, walk in God's will. Yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are all these people walking around anxious. They're worried about their bills. They're worried about... You know, all these things. Okay? I've been guilty of it. I'm sure we've all been guilty at one time or another of worrying okay. about how we're going to get the next bill paid and what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. Dr. Cole used to talk about the fact that we become slave to our choices. And I said to Dad today, we make our decisions and then our decisions make us. Repeat that, please. We make our decisions, and then our decisions make us. <clears throat> yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. People wondering, you know, why did I marry the person I married? Why did I do this? Why did I do that? Because each decision now causes... A, a, a response which then has to cause other decisions. And those decisions are based on the prior ones. So we make our decisions and then our decisions make us. Indeed. Mm-hmm. 
But Jesus gave us a cure for anxiety. Jesus gave us a cure for anxiety. And that is Luke chapter 12, verses 22 to 34. Jesus says to his disciples, therefore I tell you, don't worry about your life, what you will eat, or about the body, or what you will wear. For life is more than food and the body is more than clothing. Mm -hmm. Consider the ravens. They don't sow or reap. They don't have a storeroom or a barn, yet God feeds them. Aren't you yeah. worth much more than the birds? Mm -hmm. Can any of you add a cubit to his height by worrying? If then you're not even able to do a little thing, why worry about the rest? Hmm. Consider how the wildflowers grow. They don't labor or spin thread. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was adorned like one of these. If that's how God clothed the grass, which is in the field today and thrown into the furnace tomorrow, how much more will he do for you, you of little faith? Don't keep striving for what you should eat and what you should drink, and don't be anxious. For the Gentile world eagerly seeks all these things, and your Father knows that you need them. But seek his kingdom, and these things will be provided for you. King James, of course, says it, but seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all these things will be added unto you. Yeah. Don't be afraid, little flock, because your father delights to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions mm -hmm. and give them to the poor. Make money bags for yourselves that don't grow old, an inexhaustible treasure of heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys for where your treasure is there your heart will be also now what is he saying is he saying to just up and give away everything you have no he's saying refocus your thinking on the things of god seek the kingdom righteousness and peace and joy in the holy ghost Seek to follow his commands. Love God with everything and love neighbor as self. Mm -hmm. Seek to give preference to the people and things of God. No man who has left mother, father, sisters, and brothers for my sake will not receive sisters, brothers, fathers, plus houses and land and everything now and in the age to come, Jesus says. Now, of course, that's mm -hmm. going to happen with persecution, he says. You're going to have persecution with it, but that's part of life. Mm 